Have you ever wondered how we can see the stars and galaxies in the night sky? How is it possible that the light from these distant objects can reach our eyes through the vast emptiness of space? And how did the universe become transparent in the first place? In this video, we will explore these questions and learn about the amazing discoveries that have been made by astronomers using the most powerful telescope ever built, the James Webb Space Telescope. We will find out how galaxies made the early universe transparent, how we can observe this phenomenon, and what it tells us about the history and evolution of our cosmos. So buckle up and get ready for a journey through time and space. Light is one of the most fascinating and mysterious aspects of nature. It is both a wave and a particle. It can travel at incredible speeds, and it can interact with matter in various ways. Light is also the main source of information we have about the universe, since it carries the signatures of the objects that emit or reflect it. But light is not always easy to observe or understand. Sometimes it can be blocked, scattered, absorbed, or bent by different substances or forces, and sometimes it can change its properties depending on the environment it passes through. To understand how light behaves in different situations, we need to know some basic concepts about its nature and characteristics. One of these concepts is wavelength, which is the distance between two consecutive peaks or troughs of a wave. Wavelength determines the color and energy of light. For example, red light has a longer wavelength and lower energy than blue light, which has a shorter wavelength and higher energy. The range of wavelengths that we can see with our eyes is called the visible spectrum, and it goes from violet to red. However, there are many other types of light that are invisible to us, such as infrared, ultraviolet, X-ray, or gamma ray. These types of light have wavelengths that are either longer or shorter than the visible spectrum, and they have different energies and effects on matter. Another concept that we need to know is frequency, which is the number of waves that pass a certain point in a given time. Frequency is related to wavelength by a simple equation. Frequency times wavelength equals the speed of light. This means that light with a shorter wavelength has a higher frequency than light with a longer wavelength. Frequency also determines the energy of light, since higher frequency means higher energy. A third concept that we need to know is intensity, which is the amount of energy that a wave carries per unit area per unit time. Intensity depends on both frequency and amplitude, which is the height of a wave. Higher frequency and higher amplitude mean higher intensity. Intensity affects how bright or dim a source of light appears to us. These three concepts, wavelength, frequency, and intensity, help us describe and classify different types of light. However, they are not enough to explain how light interacts with matter. For that, we need another concept, ionization. Ionization is the process by which an atom or molecule loses or gains one or more electrons, creating electrically charged particles called ions. Ionization can be caused by various factors, such as heat, electricity, or radiation. In particular, ionization can be caused by light when it has enough energy to knock off electrons from atoms or molecules. The minimum amount of energy required to ionize an atom or molecule depends on its type and structure. For example, hydrogen atoms are easier to ionize than helium atoms because they have only one electron to lose. Ionized light is very energetic and can affect the state of matter around it. For example, ionized light can heat up gas by transferring its energy to the atoms and molecules in it. It can also change the chemical composition of gas by breaking or forming bonds between atoms and molecules. Additionally, it can alter the optical properties of gas by making it more or less transparent to other types of light. One of the places where ionized light plays a crucial role is in the intergalactic medium, or IgM. This is the name given to the gas that fills the space between galaxies. The intergalactic medium is mostly composed of hydrogen and helium atoms, which are the simplest and most abundant elements in the universe. The intergalactic medium is also very thin and cold, with an average density of less than one atom per cubic meter and a temperature of a few degrees above absolute zero. However, despite its low density and temperature, the intergalactic medium is not completely dark or inert. It can be influenced by various sources of light, such as stars, quasars, or gamma-ray bursts. 
And depending on the intensity and wavelength of this light, the intergalactic medium can undergo different phases of ionization. One of these phases is called reionization, and it is one of the most important events in the history of the universe. Reionization refers to the process by which the intergalactic medium was transformed from being mostly neutral to being mostly ionized. This happened when ionizing photons or particles of light with enough energy to ionize hydrogen atoms escaped from galaxies and penetrated into the intergalactic medium. Ionizing photons are produced by hot and massive stars, as well as by supermassive black holes at the centers of galaxies. These photons have very short wavelengths in the ultraviolet or X-ray range of the electromagnetic spectrum. Reionization began about 400 million years after the Big Bang, when the first stars and galaxies formed in the universe. At that time, most of the intergalactic medium was neutral and opaque to ionizing photons, meaning that they could not travel far before being absorbed by hydrogen atoms. This made it difficult for astronomers to observe these early sources of light with conventional telescopes. However, as more and more galaxies formed and emitted more and more ionizing photons, they gradually created bubbles of ionized gas around them. These bubbles grew larger and larger over time, eventually overlapping and merging with each other. This made the intergalactic medium more transparent to ionizing photons, allowing them to travel longer distances across space. Reionization was completed about one billion years after the Big Bang, when almost all of the hydrogen atoms in the intergalactic medium were ionized. This marked a major transition in the state of matter in the universe, as well as in its appearance and structure. Reionization also had significant effects on galaxy formation and evolution, since it changed the temperature and pressure of the gas that could collapse into new stars and planets. One of the main challenges for astronomers studying reionization is to measure how much ionizing photons escaped from galaxies into the intergalactic medium at different times in cosmic history. This is not easy to do because these photons are very faint and hard to detect directly. However, there is a clever way to estimate their escape fraction indirectly, by looking at how they affect other types of light that are easier to observe. One such type of light is called Lyman-alpha emission. This is a specific wavelength of ultraviolet light that is emitted by hydrogen atoms when they recombine with electrons after being ionized. Lyman-alpha emission is very common in young and star-forming galaxies, since they have a lot of hydrogen gas that is constantly being ionized and recombined by their stars. Lyman-alpha emission is also very sensitive to the ionization state of the intergalactic medium, since it can be absorbed or scattered by neutral hydrogen atoms along its path. Therefore, by measuring how much Lyman-alpha emission reaches us from distant galaxies, we can infer how much ionizing photons escaped from them and how transparent the intergalactic medium was at that time. This is exactly what a team of researchers did using the James Webb Space Telescope, the most advanced and powerful telescope ever built. Using its four sophisticated instruments that can observe the universe in infrared light, which is invisible to our eyes but can penetrate through dust and gas that block other types of light. The researchers observed a sample of 717 galaxies that existed when the universe was only 900 million years old during the end of the reionization era. They measured their Lyman-alpha emission and compared it with their brightness in other wavelengths. They found that most of these galaxies had very low escape fractions of ionizing photons, meaning that they were surrounded by thick shells of neutral gas that blocked most of their ionizing light. However, they also found that some of these galaxies had very high escape fractions of ionizing photons, meaning that they were surrounded by large bubbles of ionized gas that allowed most of their ionizing light to escape into the intergalactic medium. These bubbles had a radius of about 2 million light years, which is huge compared to the size of the galaxies themselves. The researchers concluded that these galaxies were responsible for ionizing the gas around them, and that over the next 100 million years, their bubbles grew larger and larger until they merged with each other and made the entire universe transparent. 
This is the first direct evidence that galaxies were the main drivers of reionization, and it also provides new insights into how galaxies formed and evolved in the early universe. We hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new about the amazing discoveries made by James Webb Space Telescope. If you want to keep up to date with more exciting news and stories about astronomy and space exploration, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching and see you next time.